So now that it's all assembled, there's only one thing left for us to do, and that's peel off the plastic. So satisfying. Hey everyone, Digital David here. Today on this episode of New Egg Now, I'm gonna show you guys how to build a computer step by step. Shout out to Cooler Master for sending us some great products to use in today's build. If you're interested in anything that you see here, the links to them will be in the video description below. Now let's go ahead, let's get started. So you can see I got all the parts and pieces prepped. This will help us as we assemble everything in stages. We got our M.2 drive and screw, our CPU, our motherboard with our parts and pieces, as well as our RAM sticks. You can see our cooler with our fans and accessories for that, as well as an additional fan I'm gonna install in this case. And we have our power supply right here. I also have the case all set and ready to go. I removed both panels and the panel from the top. I may end up removing the front panel as well. It can't hurt, you can always just put it back on after your build. But now that everything's prepped, it'll make getting everything assembled that much easier. So let's continue on with the build. So when working on the motherboard, I highly recommend that you read through the user guide and manual at least one time to get familiar with all the parts, components, the layout, and where everything is gonna connect. So we're gonna be installing our CPU, our M.2 drive, and our two sticks of RAM. So first up, let's go ahead, let's drop in our CPU. So here we go, we can take it out of the packaging very carefully you can see we got all of our pins on this side and what we're going to do when we install the cpu so if you look up close there's a little golden triangle on one corner of the cpu that's going to match up with what i call pac-man so you can see we have pac-man right here on the board and that's where that piece is going to go and you can see the triangles on the other side too in the case of this specific processor we're going to open this lever up so we can just gently place it in so you can see it falls right in. Everything's lined up perfectly. And then we just take this little lever and then we tighten it back down. So there we go. We just successfully installed the CPU. Now let's go ahead, let's work on the sticks of RAM. So you'll get familiar with your board. The user guide and manual will tell you which slots to use depending on how many sticks you're using. In this case, we actually have the layout right here printed on the board for us. So we'll be using this DIM A2 and DIM B2 slots. And now we just take our RAM. You can see they're different sides. So we have to make sure that the longer side is where it needs to be and the shorter side is where it needs to be. Just line it up and just gently drop it in place. Try not to force anything. And then it will make a nice click for you. So there we go. We just got the first stick installed. Same thing with the second one. Pay attention to how it's gonna go. It's only gonna fit one way, so you don't wanna force it. And then gently press in and you can see it just clicked in and now the RAM has successfully been installed. Now we're ready to install the M.2 drive. So let's take our screwdriver. Let's loosen it up. So we got the first screw out and these are gonna be different size screws. So let's keep them separated. Same with the heat sink here. And now we can go ahead and we can install our drive. You may have a different size drive, so you can see we have a ton of different options. And then we can just line up the screw that we need. So in this case, just gently take your drive like we have here, and then you just press it in. And we're gonna take our M.2 screw, and it's already in the correct spot and position for us. So we can just very gently tighten it in place. So there we go, we have it installed. Now we can put the heat sink back on. Line everything up, take our screw, gently tighten it back down. Same with the other piece. Just line everything up and screw it in place till it's nice and firm and snug in place. So there we go, we have the CPU installed, our RAM and our M.2 drive. On this board, we have another spot if we wanna install another M.2 drive, you can do that right here. We also still have our IO shield. We need to make sure that we don't forget this. Depending on the quality of your motherboard, you may have this separate or it's already integrated. I prefer to have the integrated ones because a lot of times I will forget to get this installed. So when we prep the case, we're gonna make sure to install our IO shield. So for the cooler, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install the fans. Pay attention to how everything's gonna be laid out with your build. So for me, what I envision is it's gonna look just like this on our CPU. So these lines are gonna be on this side. This is gonna be routed 
out and through to the back side of the case. This will be positioned like this, right? So this will be mounted to the top of the case. This will be on our CPU. So with that being said, with this layout, we wanna make sure our fan wires are gonna be pointed that direction too. So you're gonna take your fan with the Cooler Master logo and branding, that's gonna be face down. And I want our cables to come out and down and around right here. So we're gonna drop both of our fans in place, just like you see right here. We're gonna line up the holes, and then we're gonna take four of these per fan, drop them in place, and tighten them down. So you can see we got both fans successfully installed. Now it's time to install the two brackets for our AMD CPU and the four included screws. So we're gonna take one bracket, we're gonna install it right here and use two of those screws. And we're gonna take the other bracket, we're gonna install it right here and use the other two screws. So there we go, you can see how we have everything installed. So the screws go in through the bottom and then you can see the bracket on the top right there. Pay attention to the layout where we have both of them installed and again visualize how that's going to connect on the cpu with the two brackets that are already on our board so there you go you can see it from all different sides and angles we have successfully prepped our cpu cooler we just need to go ahead remove this attach it to the case, apply a pea-sized amount of thermal paste on the processor, and it's all set and ready to go. So the case is prepped and ready to go. You can see I went ahead, I snapped in our IO shield. If your motherboard has that, you'll wanna do that now. I removed some extra panels on the back side too, right here that was covering up our cable management. We'll need access to all of these cables. I could remove this one, but there's also our RGB hub on there too that's connected to it, so I've left that one in place we'll remove that at a later time when it's time to connect all of our rgb together and then looking back on the inside i want to remove that exhaust fan and we're going to swap it out with this fan so let's go ahead let's do that right now what we need to do is we need to take these four screws out and remove the fan so you can see i got the old fan removed right here check it out and we have the new fan ready to go to be installed with our four included screws at this step, make sure you choose the correct setting you want on the back. You can flip that switch. And also choose how you want to have the cables run. I think in this case, I'm gonna route those cables uh, to the side, I believe. We're gonna go either up or to the side right here and out. So we can tuck them behind and then connect everything behind the motherboard. That's gonna be the plan for this. So we'll just go ahead and make sure everything's lined up how we want it. And I think we're actually gonna go like this. So. It's going to be on the side and they'll go right around the IO cover and out and we'll just gently line it up. And again, I can switch this later on if I want, but while we're here, it's nice just to go ahead and fit everything in. So now that we have it fitted where we want, we could slide it back and forth to really get the final position and now take the new four included screws and tighten everything in place. Now you may have noticed at this step, we actually modified the shroud down here. So we removed the panel so we can expose our power supply. This was quite the process. So I'd highly recommend if you are gonna do something like this, that you do this before you get any other parts or components installed because you'll have to remove three different sections. This section first with most of the screws on the back, four screws on the back. Then you'll have to remove this shroud that's covering our hard drive bays. You'll have to remove the hard drive bays as well and then you'll be able to remove this shroud. I believe there's around 11 screws total. Most are on the back, a couple are down here on the front and a couple are on the sides for that last shroud. But if you do want to expose the power supply, that is something you're able to do with this case, which is what we're going to do in this build. So the final preparations we have to make to our case is to install the standoff brackets for our motherboard. So you can see I got them all installed already. Very simple and straightforward. The parts are included in the nice kit that they give us and they also give us a socket we can use with our Phillips head screwdriver to tighten them in place. So that's all you have to do. Just line them up with the holes in your motherboards for whatever ones are missing. Pay attention to your board too. It may tell you on the back, there's certain areas where you want to make sure there are no standoff brackets like you see here. With that being said, now we're ready to place our motherboard into the case. At this step, if you have an IO shield like I do that's already installed on the back, you wanna make sure that none of the grounding options accidentally block any of the ports as you place it in. So just be very careful with that. Double check after you place the motherboard in that you're happy with everything. In my case, I can see I'm not. I gotta get underneath that guy right there. And now I'm looking back. None of my USB ports are blocked or covered. 
Same with my HDMI and DisplayPort. Everything is set up here and it looks great. So we just need to make sure now that it's just lined up with the holes. So there we go. We have it dropped in place and now we're ready to use the included screws that came with our case. Maybe you have screws with your motherboard too, but they did provide motherboard screws for you. You can use for the motherboard and the PSU. So you can see them 630 seconds right here in the user guide. I'll show you that really quick in case you're confused. But you can see right here in the user guide and manual, the screw we're gonna use, there's 13 of them. So feel free to count them out. 630 second, five screw PSU motherboard tray. So that's the screws you can use. So now take a Phillips head screwdriver. If you have one that's magnetized, it'll make your life a little bit easier. And then place your screws wherever you have the holes in your board that line up with the standoff brackets. So there we go. You can see we got all the screws installed and the motherboard fastened in place. To get the cooler installed, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna line up the radiator and we're gonna take our eight included screws and fasten them in place right here to hold everything firm. Before we fasten that down though, I wanna show you guys, I got some of the extra adapter cables for the RGB connected at this step that we're gonna fish through right here to make that a little bit easier before we get it fastened. So we're gonna fish the cables through, then we're gonna fasten the radiator with the eight included screws right here to the top of the case. So we got the cables fished through right here, you can see on the backside, and now we just need to line up these holes with the slots so then we can take our eight screws and fasten everything in place. So that looks like the right spot. So let's go ahead, let's tighten those down. So there we go, we have all eight screws fastened in place. Now it's time to go ahead, we're gonna peel this sticker before installation. We're gonna take our thermal paste, we're gonna apply a pea-sized amount right here on the center of our CPU. And then we're gonna take this unit just like you see right here, and then we're gonna fasten it in place with the two brackets one on each side right there. So there we go. We got our pea-sized amount of thermal paste applied. And now we're going to very gently line it up. Both brackets. And just gently tighten everything down in place. Just gently go back and forth again, finger tight, do both alternating between the two instead of just applying the pressure unevenly on one side and then make sure both are nice and snug. So here we go, the top one's tight and now the bottom one is almost there. All right, there we go. That is tight as well too. Now we can finish threading all of our cables through at this stage. So right here you can see we have our CPU fan cable. So we're gonna go ahead, we actually have the CPU fan connection right under here, my index finger under this fan. We're gonna gently press it into place on the board and then just slide it in and press down. So there we go, we have it connected. And now at this stage, I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna tidy up a lot of the other cables from our IO and our front panel header on the board before we get into our power supply unit. This will just help make everything a little bit smoother and easier for the rest of the installation so we're just not overwhelmed by wires. So looking at the back of the board, you can already see we have a ton of different wires to go over and that we're gonna connect to our motherboard right now. You can see that if you continue to add on more things like installing the power supply at this step, it can get overwhelming, especially if it's your first time building a PC. But you can see some of the different cable options we have. We have some of our RGB five volt connectors right here. We have some of our fan connectors. So you can see we have different options here. A lot of fans our HD audio, we have all of our little power pins and such for the front panel. Here's a USB type C header for that USB type C that we're gonna connect to our board. This board does have the USB type C header. Here's another fan cable for those two 200 millimeter fans. Then you may have noticed this actually features two USB 3.0 cables. So we have four USB ports on the front panel, but our board only supports one USB 3.0 header. So in our case, we're just gonna install one of these and the other two USBs will not be usable. 
with this specific motherboard, but we could always add a PCIe expansion card if we wanted to pick up another USB header to get that installed. But now we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna push these back through these grommets and we're gonna get everything connected to the board. So now I wanted to show you guys up close everything that I've connected so far. The first one you can see CPU fan right here, that's from the cooler. Then you can see we got two of our system fans connected right here, both are routed through the back. The first one we have connected is the included splitter cable we have that's gonna connect two of these fans up here around the back side. Then you can see USB type C's connected. Further down here, we have our JFP1, you can see in the corner. That's gonna be our hard drive LEDs, our power switch, that sort of thing. So just refer to the user guide manual for the correct layout. Then you can see we have our J Rainbow plugged in. That's gonna be our addressable RGB hub. We have another fan plugged in. That's gonna be a fan splitter for the two 200 millimeter fans connected through the backside. Here's our one USB 3.0 header. Here's our USB 2.0 header that we have connected to our addressable RGB hub. And then moving further along, you can see we have our HD audio connected right there. So that's a close up look of all the cable connections on this side of the motherboard. You can see all the way back in there. Now let's go ahead and let's look at the other side. So now you can see from the back side right here, we got a lot going on with our cables. So first up, I took the extra USB 3.0 header and we're just tucking it away right here. We're not gonna be using that right now for this specific build. Then at the top, you can see we have our cooler fans and our exhaust fan um, all routed right here. So we're using that fan extension for both of those fans. And then the third fan on the cooler is actually connected to the motherboard directly. The RGB lights are all connected and routed back to the hub, as you guys can see there. And then we can look at the hub. You can see we got micro USB connected and that's going to our USB 2.0 header. The reset switch is already connected for us right out of the box, which is nice. So we can use the reset button on the front for the lights. Then we have our fans connected right here to these splitter cables. And then we have our ARGB in, and that's going to the motherboard itself with that J Rainbow One connector. So eventually this will all get tidied up and tucked back on to the case. Now let's go ahead, let's get the power supply installed. So on the power supply unit itself, you can see I went ahead, I already connected all the cables that we're gonna be using for this build. So we have our CPU power cable. We have a PCIe power cable for our GPU. You can see we have our main motherboard power cable as well connected. And then I went ahead, I only added one hard drive power connector right here because we're only gonna need one for our RGB hub, that's what's gonna help power that. So you can see right here, I have one of the SATA cables connected for that. Obviously we have plenty of room to expand and add out more in the future. If you want, you could put all of your cables in there even if you're not using them. But for me, for this build, I know what I'm gonna be using with this and what the future holds. So this is gonna be good enough for us right now. So next thing we have to do is we're gonna slide it in the back right here. So the back bracket's on, let's go ahead, let's route our cables through and slide it in. Now that we have it in, we can fasten it back in place. Now it's time to route the cables up and through and connect it to the motherboard. So now looking at the motherboard in the front of the case, we can see our CPU connector right there. Coming along here, you can see our main motherboard connector. And then last but not least, on this side, you can see we have our PCIe power coming up right through there. If you want to do that, you just have to move this out a little bit and fish it through. You could also bring it through over here as well if you wanted with this current configuration. Obviously, if you didn't have any of the shrouds on or anything else too, you'd have plenty of room to fish up a bunch of cables. But you can see on the front, we got our GPU power right here, our main motherboard power, and our CPU power. This was a little tricky to get in, but we were able to achieve it without having to remove anything. Now let's look at the back side. So looking on the back side, you can see we have our CPU cable right here, going all that providing power, our main motherboard cable right here connected, fished through. And then underneath we have the PCIe tucked up and coming out through there. And then lastly, you can see here's our SATA power connector as well, powering our addressable RGB hub. 
Now it's time to install our GPU. We're gonna install it in this first slot right here. So we have to prep our case and we need to remove these two covers right here to make sure it's gonna fit with the back plate that we have for our GPU. So we need a Phillips head screwdriver to remove these two covers. Now you can see the two covers have been removed so we can take our GPU. We should be able to line it up like so and just gently snap it in place so you can see it just fits. And here we go, we have our PCIe power cable right here that we can pull out some extra, we're gonna need a little bit of extra, and then we can bring it around. And let's use this one. And then you can see, we're just gonna gently line everything up, snap it in place. Now we just need to fasten the two screws back in place and we have successfully installed our GPU. So now we have everything installed and our PC has technically been built. At this step, I highly recommend proceeding to trying to power on your unit to see if it will post. I don't recommend managing your cables just yet because if it doesn't post and you've spent all that time managing your cables, well, guess what? You're gonna start taking stuff apart, troubleshooting, diagnosing, and everything else. So I'd highly recommend at this stage, powering it on to see if your PC will post. If it does, great, then you can proceed with cable managing. If not, you'll be grateful that you didn't spend all that time tidying up cables for something that doesn't work. So let's go ahead, let's see if it'll post. All right, it's time for the big reveal. Here we go, let's push the power button. Check that out. We have power, the fans are spinning. That's definitely a good sign. Let's see if we're able to get into our bio settings as well too. And there we go, the BIOS is loaded up on the screen and everything is working properly. Super excited for this. So now at this stage, I highly recommend going in your BIOS settings, configuring your RAM to make sure you're getting the correct speed. So overclock it per the user guide manual for your RAM as well as your motherboard settings. You can just change your XMP profile. Now we're ready to go ahead. We can power everything down and cable manage. All right, so you can see from the top down shot from the front, this is how we're gonna leave the cables for now. So we didn't really manage much on the front, just made sure that we could tuck the cables coming from our cooler back up and underneath the case. In the future, I may end up reworking the PCIe cable. I'm not sure if I'm sold on having it coming out this side or if I wanna bring it out from one of the grommets here. And if I really wanted to, I could zip tie this and really try to tidy that up. Now let's look at it from the back side. Here's a look from the back side. Now you can see we have all of our panels reattached and everything looks great. I did have to keep the CPU power cable exposed and one of the fan cables for their RGB lights right there. Everything else is kind of hidden up top, off to the side or underneath one of the three panels. So let's just appreciate for a second how good the RGB lights look with the fans and the cooler. Now let's go ahead, let's look at it from the front so we can really appreciate the 200 millimeter fans. Look at those fans. So I swapped for the tempered glass. I really wanted to be able to see those fans in action and they look really, really cool and a nice touch to this build to have so much RGB over such a large surface area. So now that it's all assembled, there's only one thing left for us to do and that's peel off the plastic. So satisfying. Well, that concludes our video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget the product link will be in our video description below. Please go ahead, check it out and do your shopping from there. Any purchase made through that link helps support our channel at no additional cost to you. So we're really grateful and thankful for all of your support. While you're at it, can you go ahead and hit that like button for us? and subscribe to our channel. We have new content coming out daily and we don't want you to miss anything. Please go ahead and give us a follow online and make it a clean sweep. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, TikTok, Discord. You can message us on WeChat, check out our website and join our free newsletter. Thank you guys so much for being here. Don't forget new content daily and we can't wait to see you in our next video.